What's up guys, it's Dalmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to how to make healthcare better and more affordable from Common Sense Soapbox. This actually I think might be their longest video, it's about 5 minutes long. Obviously one of the most pressing issues we see nowadays in terms of like economic stuff I would say. It's probably the most contentious economic issue in, a, in the US at least. Uh, most other places have single pair of healthcare systems. They obviously have their benefits and the downfall. The benefits being, you know, essentially for your average Joe, it's obviously a much better system. But, you know, if you're, th there's a lot less medical advancement, right? Most of the medical advancements nowadays come from the United States. Um, there's a lot less, you know, availability of high quality medicine, right? Basically everyone gets the same thing. Uh, GSP actually does a great interview on this. I can't remember which podcast he was on, but he was comparing the American and the Canadian system. He basically said, you know, if you're an average Joe, you definitely want to live in Canada for the medical system, but if you're, you know, a professional athlete, you definitely, you know, he does all his stuff in the U.S. because he can get access to better medical care down there. One of the things I always find really funny, um, as somebody from Canada, is that we often see a lot of Canadians brag about the innovations of the Canadian medical care system, but what they fail to realize or what they omit, and maybe they even do realize, is that most of those medical advancements were made prior to our single care, payer healthcare system, right? Like one of the most ones that you'll often hear is uh, uh, insulation or insulin, sorry, not insulation, insulin, uh, which is used for diabetes, was developed in Canada, but it was developed prior to the single payer system, um, kind of stuff like that. So obviously America has, you know, the most innovation in the world when it comes to this kind of stuff. They have, you know, a lot of the brain drain from the rest of the world when it comes to doctors, right? These doctors are leaving these single payer systems to go to the American system, but the American system isn't perfect either. But um, you know, this is by no means my area of expertise, so I, I definitely want to see what his take is on this. So link to the original video down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm, and let's get into it. Ow! I'm so sorry this happened to you. I know. Can you believe this? It's the worst paper cut I've ever gotten. <laughs> that looks pretty bad. Let's get you some treatment. This guy's like folded up. Are you insane? I'm uninsured. We're here for him. Look at this paper cut. Ah, if only there was some way to make healthcare costs reasonable for people like me. Well, there isn't one simple solution to that problem. But you know what would help? Price signals. What are those? Hey, I know this one. Price signals help us figure out which goods and services are valuable to different people. Yep, we need accurate price signals to know how to allocate scarce resources most effectively. They tell us when supplies are too low or too high, when it's okay to consume more of something, and when we should cut back and help conserve our resources. But in the U.S., patients almost never know what their health care is going to cost. Price Man, I saw this one thing. I think it was from the United States, and they charged somebody like $2,000 for emotional support uh, as part of their health care. It's like absolutely hilarious to me. Uh, I'm sure it happens in Canada too, right? But we just don't see it because it's, you know, behind the scenes, the government gets the bill. So, I mean, you, you do pay it in a roundabout way. You pay it on your taxes, but it's a lot funnier when you actually get to see the kind of nonsense you're paying for. Prices are often mandated or heavily influenced by the government, and most people don't pay directly to begin with. So the price system is totally broken here. Exactly! How am I supposed to make a call on getting treatment when I have no idea what kind of bill I'm gonna get stuck with? Meanwhile, Ron's hogging up the doctor's time and resources because ultimately, he doesn't have to pay for it. Like most people, he'll bill his insurance company, and then they'll pay whatever they have to for Ron's visit without him ever knowing or caring too much about it. In the end, what ends up being paid has no real connection to the value of the service he's actually getting. And it doesn't- We often, see, again, something we see in Canada a lot, right? One of the things I find funny, Bernie Sanders brought a bunch of people up to show them the cost of Canadian medicines versus the cost of American medicines. But again, what Bernie failed to admit is that a lot of those Canadian medicines are subsidized by the government. So you're, you're not only you're paying for it up front, but you're also paying for it on your taxes, right? You basically pay for it twice. So yeah, they are cheaper in some sense, right? They're, they're cheaper when you look at the price just on the counter. But the fact that you're actually paying a lot of money on the back end when it comes to your taxes... That's what, that's what a lot of the uh, people like fail to uh, talk about when they talk about like a single pair system. It doesn't account for the opportunity cost of the doctor's time. The only solution here is to connect people to costs. But that would just mean rich people getting treated first. Not necessarily. First of all, doctors are going to do their best to prioritize people with the most urgent medical needs, if those people agree to be treated. Ow. 
but real price signals will only make it easier to figure out what services are most urgently needed and by whom. Plus, they give providers an incentive to supply more of the services that are in the highest demand. Allowing more entrepreneurship in healthcare would give patients a much wider range of options over time. In other fields, experimental new technologies start out really expensive and less effective, and only a small minority can afford them. But market competition drives the costs down over time, and the technology improves as well. This is true for food, cars, clothes, and lots of other equally essential and complicated things. Right, and again, this is a good example. Like you know, America obviously they don't have a perfect system. They got a lot of issues too. But you you still see most of the medical advancements coming to the United States. They don't come out a lot of these, uh, you know, single pair systems like Canada. We don't develop much medical technology today at all, especially compared to what we used to. You know, if you're looking at like uh, medical technology developed per capita, ours has drastically gone down since the single pair system was implemented. But it doesn't happen in healthcare, in part because of a broken pricing structure. But in the areas of healthcare where people are connected to prices, like private clinics, dentistry, optometry, and others, we see technology improving and prices decreasing over time. But what about people who are in life-threatening emergencies and don't have time to shop around? Are you saying they should just go bankrupt? Of course not. But most of the time, when people interact with the healthcare system, it isn't for life-threatening problems. And there's this weird red spot on my chest. Let's catch up, sir. <laughs> Most people could be looking for the best deals. But that's not always possible, I know. In the long run, a free market is the best way to drive prices down and improve healthcare for everyone. But for poor people who need emergency treatment today, we can still transition to a free market approach while helping them afford the artificially inflated healthcare costs through private charity or even government funded vouchers, like we have with food stamps. Those. That's another thing that I always find really funny is a lot of the people that talk about. Uh, you know, single payer healthcare systems. They act as if charity doesn't exist, right? If if, if you know these single payer systems didn't exist, then who would pay for the poor? It's like charity, like they used to, like you know historically they have for the vast majority of human history, right? I mean, you know, and the, the difference between like a charity and a, and a government is, you know, if you stop paying your taxes, the government will come after you and throw you in jail, right? And every law is at the end of a gun, right? Like if if you're being honest about it. Right. If you break the law, even you know some something as small as a fine, right? Something that normally would end with a fine. Realistically, you know, eventually you don't pay your fines. You know, you, you go to court. You refuse to show up to court. Um, you know, eventually someone with a gun is going to come and throw you in a cell or shoot you. Right. Like that's that's the end of it. Eventually, if a charity is corrupt, you just quit paying that charity and go to another charity. You can't do that with governments. Those didn't destroy the price system for food the way a state takeover of grocery stores would have, or the way government control destroyed the pricing structure for health care. Yeah, I guess that would leave people the freedom to shop around and choose which health care providers were right for them, while also helping people who can't afford it before the market drives the prices down. Exactly. Prices help producers know where their goods and services are most valued, and they shape consumption behavior discouraging waste and encouraging people to limit the resources they use. Even if people were only making their decisions based on price 80% of the time, it would be a huge improvement. That's fair. I guess we shouldn't make perfect the enemy of the good. If I can't get this elbow fixed, I'm going to amputate it myself. <laughs> ah! I love that guy. <laughs> He's always just like so ridiculous in every video. The blue dude. I can't take it anymore. I'm starting my own clinic. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share. Yeah, honestly, good video. They covered a lot of topics. Um, not much else I can say other than that. I, I mean, I, I just find it funny, you know, a lot of the people that are pro single payer healthcare, they, they're they obviously willing to talk about the benefits, but they're never willing to talk about the downsides. And a lot of the time they'll actually play down the downsides or act, you know, act as if they don't exist, right? They'll have some you know, mental gymnastics in order to justify it. It's, again, like every system, the problem is everyone thinks everything's a win-win, right? That no matter what, you're going to have a win-win-win situation. And realistically, everything's a trade-off, right? If you, if you have one system, it has benefits and downfalls. If you have another system, it has benefits and downfalls. But let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.